Hey guys, this is Steve. I'm doing this for my YouTube channel. It's just something that I've been pondering about for a little while. And it's uh, it's really, I'm, I'm doing this for my students. And maybe you're out there and you're just thinking about like, um, you know, you're getting a new bass and you're a beginner and, or you're somebody who's been playing for a while. Um, real coffee drinker. Um, and you're just kind of like thinking about like, I'm looking for that new instrument. Should I start with a four string? Should I start with a six string? And, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been pondering this for a little while. And I've been, you know, my son is six years old and we're working on languages with him. We're teaching him. He's learning Spanish and a couple other languages and we're trying to really pick something up. And, uh, you know, and, and, I, and I thought about this because I've been, I've been a diehard four string player for almost my entire life. So I've been playing since six. And uh, so his age is kind of what's making me reflect on this. Uh, and for the last almost year, I've been playing this five-string bass, which is uh, which is the M bass. I can show you this. It frames over. Oh, hit the microphone. It's my M bass. This is the Brooklyn. But what I'm really trying to say here is that when we learn a language, a lot of times we're thinking about it. Um, through an English filter. How do you become how do you become more fluent in that language if um or or just picking the language that you want to go with as as a as a bass player. So whether that language is a four string, a five string, a six string, a seven string, a three string, it really depends on um on you. And and so in my experience playing this instrument this last year, I've really found that um, my approach in thinking has been more as a four string player with an extra string rather than a, a true five string player that this is my voice, this is my language, this is what I speak. And I don't know if I'm the only one thinking this, I'm sure I'm not because I've had many students who show up with a five string bass and this string is basically just a thumb rest, right? How many of us are out there that our thumbs rest on this. And and there's always those guys, and, and, and they're right, you know, um, I've heard Victor say it, you know, you get five more notes. And it's true, you do get five more notes, but it you have a timbre from that fifth string that is different from the four string, or a five string with a high C, you get it, like, sure, I can play G here, but I can also play G there. And you hear, you'll hear the difference between the two notes. So <clears throat> this lesson, this video, is going to be more based around um, the ideas of, of, of the four-string player looking at five-string concepts. Or I think I said, the way I looked at this, I said five-string five bass strategies for the four-string bassist. So like it, love it, I don't care. I really don't care. <laughs> this is just what's, it, it's my vlog, it's it's what I'm thinking about right now. And um, these are some of the some of the ideas that I've been kind of running into. So I'll be back in a second and we're gonna start looking at some of these ideas of how we can expand our knowledge and thinking. Uh, so this is the next part of the lesson that, or the conversation, let's call it a conversation, it's not really a lesson. Um, <clears throat> And really what we're trying to figure out here is how do we expand how do we expand the palette of, of thinking beyond four strings? And that's really what I'm trying to do today is I'm this is really for me because I'm one of those guys who came over to the instrument from a four string. And and there are moments that I'm I'm so engrossed in the four and so uh, entrenched in that that concept of thinking four strings that sometimes the symmetry of this instrument throws me off. And as somebody who's gone to school for music, uh, studied for a long time, played with a lot of people, you know, 90% of the time people want a four string anyway, um, but five string is a relevant instrument. Now, what I'm thinking is like when the student comes up and, and if you're just taking lessons on YouTube, or <laughs> if you can call it that, um, if you're just watching videos on YouTube, do whatever you wanna do. I mean, if that's, if, if that's the end of your, of your education platform, you're not going to go very far anyway. Um, you need to expand beyond that. You need to get with a teacher, seriously. No matter who the teacher is, 
you need to get with somebody to get that feedback because you just playing and following a video and then making your own videos of you playing with those videos, that's nonsense. And, and I'm sure there's people that are going to disagree with me, and that's fine. You probably have a million followers, and I have 183. <clears throat> but I've probably been doing this a lot longer than you, and um, I probably have more education, uh, <laughs> more degrees than you do. I'm not saying that to be a dick. I'm just saying that because a lot of the stuff that I see out there is all about flash and not about playing. This is more about expanding the palette and being a player and being able to kind of expand your knowledge resource. And again, and I'm, and I'm just saying this, this tirade because I see so many people going and, and doing their videos and YouTube self-taught YouTubers, if you can call it that, because nobody's truly self-taught if you're watching somebody else, but you're not getting feedback in the moment. So there's a lot of mistakes that are happening that, that are easily correctable that are becoming the norm. And I see that with my students in the high school. When I teach high school music, which I do a lot, um, you're seeing a lot of a lot of I have to fix a lot of stuff that's that's gone wrong because there's no input. We're human beings. We have to we we have to have a resource outside of ourselves and a screen to work with. So <clears throat> I digress. So back to what we're talking about: expanding the concepts of going from four to five to six to seven to whatever. What I'm saying here is that if you are a beginning bass player and you are looking for that first base, and you see yourself being drawn to the five, go to the five. You see yourself being drawn to the six, go to the six, go to the four. When we think about conversational language, like if, if English is my only language, I try to speak Spanish when, when that opportunity comes up because I've learned Spanish in high school and college, and I try to speak conversational Spanish. It still goes through my English filter. Same way that playing a five string bass goes through my four string filter. How do we get beyond the four string filter? And that's really what I'm talking about today. <clears throat> so, we've had some time to think about our instruments. We've had some time to play our instruments. And if you're a five string guy and you're watching this, you're probably like, I've been playing five my whole life. That's great. Awesome. And that's what I'm saying. Maybe that was the best way to do it. But as a teacher, and being in a school or even at lessons, and when I teach private lessons, in the school, the schools generally give us four string basses, either uprights or electric basses or four strings. So we're kind of limited to what we can teach. Now, if you are a student and you're kind of, you're shopping for that instrument, and hopefully you're going to a real store and actually picking it up and playing it rather than just going online and saying, ooh, that one looks good, and having it delivered and then it turns out the instrument doesn't play well because it's not set up and you don't know what to do got to go and play it at a real store or go to Luthier and play one of their instruments or go to a guitar show and play something. Um, <clears throat> with that, finding the right instrument for you. I think Zappa said, you know, go to the guitar store, find the, the instrument that speaks to you and get it. I'm, I'm probably paraphrasing there, but, you know. Um, <clears throat> in this case, what I'm thinking about is like, how do I expand? How do I incorporate my fifth string into my four string vocabulary without, without feeling like I'm always putting that filter in. Well, for me, the new thing, and I've been playing this instrument, this is my Brooklyn, this is my m -Bass Brooklyn. I'll give you a shot of the headstock there so you can see that. And it's a wonderful instrument. I love this instrument. It is the first five string that I've actually kept. I've had many five strings and I've sold them over the years. Many people that are watching this actually owned one of my five strings. Um, <clears throat> they normally stayed for about six weeks and they were gone. In this case, I've kept this one because I really like this. It's a 33-inch scale, which feels really nice, and it's a five-string with a high C, and I like the high C. Now, a lot of us are playing with a low B, and, and a lot, I've had a lot of students who show up for lessons with a low B string, that the B string is basically functioning as a thumb rest. It's a floating thumb rest. Well, how do we incorporate those five notes? And I think that, that is, that's almost a, a misnomer, too is to say, well, the instrument adds only five more notes. The truth is, it adds a lot more notes because they're, they're the same notes, but they have a different timbre. An E being played on the B string has a different sound than an open E. It just does. <clears throat> and using that range and using that extension is really important. Because maybe like me, 
you find yourself, well, when I'm playing like a, a line, you know, and I'm thinking through, I'm thinking across four strings, I'm not even thinking about adding, adding this in, into my line. So as I'm working through, so I'm playing a song. So I'm, I'm working through my line, and I'm not even thinking about adding that C string. So I have to make sure that I get out of this thought of like, oh, well, I have to add that in. It just should be natural. So as I'm working through the strings, it should automatically be there that I'm... I should just automatically be able to add that into my repertoire. <clears throat> and that seems easier said than done. And it is easier said than done. Uh, I know because I'm living that. <clears throat> but over the last 12 months, I really had the chance to really experiment and think about how do I expand these concepts. So some of the things that I thought about were well, how do I use, especially if I'm if I if I'm playing anything, and, and a lot of us jazz guys <clears throat> who, who went to school for this are taught that you don't think pentatonics. Pentatonics are boring. They're simple. They're you know whatever, and that's that's really kind of selling out a big portion of real estate that is can be really useful, especially since ninety percent of the gigs that are out there are not jazz gigs and are rock gigs or pop gigs or R&B gigs that you might need that. So there's no reason to uh, to shit on that. Um, so one of the things that I've been looking at is like, well, exp expanding the pentatonic. And really that's what I'm looking at today is expanding the pentatonic to add more notes to give me the full range. So when I think about my G major pentatonic, If you've ever taken a lesson with me, we've talked about the G major pentatonic. So the G major pentatonic covers some real estate. It doesn't give me that seventh major or minor seventh. Um, it gives me my root, my second, my major third, my fifth. It gives me my sixth, and it gives me my octave. So I have one, two, three, four, five notes in the pentatonic. Pentatonic being five, right? When I say pentatonic plus, it means that I'm going outside of that major tonality. I'm actually, by playing up and keeping that shape across the strings, I end up with a flat seventh, an octave above my standard seventh, my standard flat seventh. So I have a lot more color tones when I use this pentatonic shape. And really that's <clears throat> what I want to, I'm not going to go into the major minor, I'm, I'm going to look at using the pentatonic shapes to expand, just to build repertoire across the, the fingerboard, right? Instead of thinking, you know, just just playing up the, the neck, I want to I want to use my C string to its fullest. I, w I still want to use my vertical knowledge from the four string and move up and down the neck like I did before, but I want to incorporate those sounds into my playing that it becomes regularly involved that when I'm playing a song if I'm in the I can pull those notes at any time and really spice up the the the, the bass line that I'm playing without without really having to like try to think about oh I'm playing a five string and uh, in this video and I'll, I'll make another one that'll go with this later on, but right now I'm already at 10 minutes plus with just this portion. I still have the intro. Um, I have... I have that pen, my major and my minor pentatonic shapes extended. So my major pentatonic, like I said, is what I have. My root, my third, my root, my second, my third, my fifth, my sixth, my octave. Now I'm adding in the set, the ninth, because that's my A, right? I'm adding in the ninth, so I have the ab above the A on there. I'm hitting my I'm hitting my C, which is my my fourth or my eleventh. It's the eleventh note of the scale because it's past the octave. I'm hitting my D again, which is my fifth and octave above, and then I'm hitting the flat seventh, which makes my pentatonic go from being a major pentatonic to incorporating some of that dominant sound 
with some of those extensions and those color tones inside there. So being able to pull from those notes offers some really nice tonal choices. So, and I'm just using my pentatonic shape across the neck, right? I just extended it and, and continue to use the same fingering, adding those extra notes. Now my minor pentatonic, if I play across and I want to just keep it really uniform, because there's my root, my third, my flat third, my fourth, my fifth, my flat seventh, there's my octave, there's my A, again, which is my, my ninth, right? There's, there's C, which is my fourth again, or my eleventh. There's, there's actually my D, which is my fifth, and then I have my F, which is my flat seventh. Not as spicy as, as, my, major, as my dominant major slash major pentatonic, but very, uh, very wide range. Giving me an, a, a way to expand across the platform, which is really important. So just using those two. So if you're new to, if you're thinking about the five string, I say go for it. Go for it right from the beginning. <clears throat> use it and and allow that learn it that way so that, that it's it's part of your vocabulary right away don't think of it as <clears throat> the next evolutionary step think of it well i'm going to start there and you'll probably stay there you'll probably be a five string player and that's where you're going to start and stay um <clears throat> and that's a great thing that's a really great thing and, and probably people will disagree with this and that's okay too if you do disagree please just don't just give it a thumbs down though just back up your your argument i can't stand that when people give things a thumbs down and don't actually explain themselves i mean that just shows that you are you have you have nothing to say you have nothing to say your arguments like basically just trying to stop somebody without actually doing anything so and and also if you are going to if you're going to make a negative comment make sure that you have content on there too so i can critique yours as well because um if you're not doing anything, don't say anything, unless it's positive. Um, <clears throat> and it doesn't need to be positive for me, positive, a positive message. It doesn't have to be, oh, this video is great. It probably isn't. I'm shooting this in my studio <laughs> with, with an iPad. <laughs> so, and, and that's okay. Um, it, it's, it's about thinking of outside the box, and that's not just flashy tricks and playing really fast against somebody else playing in the background, playing along with somebody else's video. You can see a million of those. I, I want you to think about it for a second. Think about what you're doing. Think about if you are a teacher and you have a student coming in, how often do you tell them, hey, you should play the four string. You'll learn the five later. You'll learn all the neck. <clears throat> I just want you to analyze you know, your approach. When somebody comes up to you and they say, I want to do this, what's your answer? You know, Do you tell them? You know, start with the four and then build your way out. The four is a starter base. It's not really a starter base. You can be there. You can be anywhere. I, uh, think of it as a filter for language. What language are you going to start to learn first? What language do you want to be fluid in? Really, at the end of the day, the call is yours. You know? All right, guys. Thanks. I'm going to put up another video, probably another two weeks, uh, going a little bit further with this. Um, if you have some comments... Um, if you have some ideas, share them. Let's talk about them. All right. Thanks, guys.